Hey guys, welcome back to part five of the DIY flight controller series. Now I hope you guys are just as excited as I am today because today we're gonna to be doing something practical and we're going to get some motor spinning. But first I've gotta head off to buy some batteries for my quad so I'll catch you guys in a bit. It has been one week since I recorded that snazzy introduction and well the past week trying to get these BL Heli 32 ESCs to spin has done my head in and to be honest I haven't got it spinning with BL Heli 32. Now please don't click away because I have got this working with BL Heli S but just not BL Heli 32. Now I don't actually know what I'm doing wrong because I've scoured like blog posts and things to figure out how exactly to get motor spinning with D-Shot and that works fine on BL Heli S but when I run the exact same code on this it just does not want to spin. I can get it to arm but just not spin and I, it's beside me why it doesn't even work. But well that's that. I know for a fact that the hardware in this board is fine as well so it's not that. Anyways, jumping straight to it, what on earth is D-Shot? Well, D-Shot is a digital protocol that your flight controller uses to talk to your ESCs to tell the motors how to spin, essentially. And D-Shot consists of a 16-bit frame. Now, let me actually flash up a D-Shot frame on the screen so you guys know what I'm talking about. Right, so this is what a D-Shot packet looks like. It consists of 16 bits. Now, each bit is exactly one over the D-Shot speed long. So if you're running D-Shot 600, a bit is about 1.67 microseconds, twice as long for D-Shot 300 and twice as long again for D-Shot 150. A logic level zero looks like a pulse width of about 37.5% high, whereas a logic level one looks like a pulse width of about 75% high. So the first 11 bits of your D-Shot packet are the actual throttle value. Now this can range from zero all the way through to 2047. The next bit is called a telemetry bit and the way this works is if this is a 1 then the ESC knows to output some sort of telemetry signal. The final 4 bits are a cyclic redundancy check and the way you calculate this is you take the exclusive OR of the 3 4 byte nibbles from the previous 12 bits. So let's focus on the first 11 bits. Like I said this ranges from 0 all the way through to 2047. Now the first 48 values so 0 through to 47 are reserved for special D-shot commands. I think these are things like disarm your motor, change the motor direction, or beep the motor, but they're not actually throttle speeds. Your throttle speeds are the values 48, which consists of a throttle speed 0, all the way through to 2047, which is your max throttle speed. Right, so how do you actually arm a D-Shot ESC like this? Well, when you first power it on, you're going to hear a series of three beeps like this. Well, this. If you can hear that. Well, those three beeps basically just say that you've powered on your ESC. If you then send it any throttle value, literally any throttle value, you'll hear this beep. You see that extra beep? Now that beep basically says that it's detected what communication protocol you're using and it's happy with that, but it's not yet armed. In order to arm it, you actually have to send it a value of zero for a while after you send it a random throttle value. Now zero throttle value is 48 if that makes sense. So let me do that. You'll hear that and your motor should start spinning. So real simple, that's how you get a BL Heli S ESC to spin using D-Shot. Now no guarantee that this will work on a BL Heli 32 ESC because when I tried it, it didn't. I think maybe I'm just missing some sort of um, handshake signal between the two. Perhaps like you have to send it a value of zero for longer. Maybe my timings are off. But there is no real official documentation for this and BL Heli 32 is closed source so I kind of gave up on that thought for now. Anyways, I've ordered a, uh, a new flight control ESC stack that runs on BL Heli S so hopefully this should be fine. Right, so that's how we spin our motors. How do we actually know how fast to spin the motors? Well, if you remember this diagram from the previous video, you'll know that the controller somehow generates a set of required inputs to our system and those inputs are angular accelerations. So how do we then translate these angular accelerations to required motor speeds? Well, from the video before that, we worked out how to get 
the torques from those angular accelerations. So we now know how to work out our pitch roll and your torques required. But again, how do we then translate that to the required motor speeds? So at the end of the day, these motors all produce thrust because we whack a propeller on them. So the way we calculate torque about the pitch axis is the thrust of these two motors minus the thrust of these two motors times the perpendicular distance from this to the center of gravity. And the same thing for the roll torque, except it's these two minus these two over this perpendicular distance. And how do we get the thrust of a motor from its motor speed? Well, generally the relationship is quadratic and you can typically find that from your data sheet and a given standard propeller pitch and uh, diameter. Great, so now we know how to work out the torques about the pitch and the roll axis, but what about the torques about the yaw axis? That's a bit trickier because those torques are not generated by the thrust on the propellers. Those torques are generated by the reaction torques, the inertial forces of these four motors. Now the torque about the yaw axis is basically the torques of these two minus the torques of these two motors or the other way around. I haven't bothered with the sign convention right now, but that's essentially how you work it out. So how do we get the torque of the motor from its motor speed? Well, generally you can't actually do that, but for our case we can because the load on these motors is fairly constant. I mean, we're not changing propeller pitch halfway through flight. So what I mean here is not really that the load is always constant, but rather that the torque developed by the motor is always some function of its speed. And the reason for that is that the propeller does not change in diameter or pitch halfway through flight. So if the propeller's thrust is a function of the motor speed, then it should make sense that the torque is also a function of the motor speed. Again, this is because the propeller itself does not change halfway through flight. So we can actually work out the torque of the motor from the motor speed by working out a relationship between the motor speed and the current drawn. If we can work out that relationship, we can work out the relationship between the torque and the motor speed because the motor current is directly proportional to the torque that it generates. So essentially that's how we do it. That is how we translate motor speeds into torques about the pitch, roll, and yaw axes. And we also have a way to convert those torques into angular accelerations. And those angular accelerations are the input into our quadcopter block of this system. So hopefully you guys should be able to spin some motors now using BLHeli S ESCs. Um, if you're following this along at home with an Arduino or an ESP32 or an STM32 or whatever microcontroller, there are a million and one ways to implement this. The personal way that I did it was I used PWM with um, the DMA to vary the duty cycle. But there are a million ways to do this. You could just bit bang this or you could use interrupts or whatnot. Anyways, I hope that was useful for you guys. And in the next video, we're gonna work out how to read user input from the receiver. And I have got this working this time. So I'll catch you guys next time.